Today I wanted to do a 14 day challenge critique hour. So I wanted to cover what that is first. But before I do, I wanna invite you guys to my Discord community. My Discord community is amazing. Um, so how do you get to it? First of all, you go to instabrack.com and click on, on the community tab right here. And that'll take you to uh, the link. You just have to click here to join the server. If you don't have a Discord account, make one. Discord's amazing. Today, I am critiquing something from the subreddit. Subreddit is equally important to the Discord. Please join us there. The subreddit is an important, important backup if Discord should ever collapse. If collapse happens on Discord, uh, uh, Reddit, we have Discord. So that's why I really, really like having two main community branches now. But please join us on the subreddit as well. This is where I will submit. Uh, you guys will submit and I will pull uh, pieces to critique for the Harvest Goddess Design Challenge, which is due next week, Thursday. Um, lots and lots of announcements, but it's all stuff for you guys. And today I'll be covering my masterclass and basically what it's all about um, and how it'll help you improve your 14 day challenge. But today is a 14 day challenge critique, so let's get into it. Okay, so what's the 14 day challenge? Again, go to my isterac.com, my website, and click on the community tab and scroll down. It has the full Q&A of what 14 day challenge is. But the 14 day challenge is a, you know, 14 days of drawing the same portrait over and over. And you start from scratch for each day. And you don't reuse the day before because that defeats the purpose. What we're trying to do is help you speed up your mileage. So if you start from scratch, you'll be able to tell whether or not you got faster. If you're just using yesterday's portrait and just advancing it, you're technically working on the same timer. You're still clocked in on that initial portrait. So you're not really getting better uh, with, with, you know, with your speed. Not that speed is something that artists and students should be concerned with. Speed is irrelevant. Write that back to me. The speed at which you draw, which you paint, which you finish something is absolutely irrelevant. Masters back then in the Renaissance used to take a year for a painting and they took their damn time and they had teams and they had all kinds of stuff to help them. So it's irrelevant what resources you use um, when it comes to illustrations and it's irrelevant the time that you spend. Unless of course you bring in you know, existing uh, pre-existing factors like time limits for commissions, etc. But the 14 day challenge is actually reference free. So it's always um, strictly, at least the first five days, you should be working strictly reference free. Um, so uh, what are we looking at here today? Um, speed is irrelevant, exactly, because you actually make connections. Yep, I don't know, I heard about this website called MySpace and it's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> MySpace is not going to help. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if MySpace ever had an art community back then. Um, so when we look at this portrait today, what are some of the problems that we see with it? Well, first and foremost, you've developed eyebrows before um, you have a really defined crease in the eyes. So you're, you're, you, you know that there's contrast here around the eyes, but you're not sure what the priority is for the contrast. And I'll cover that. Basically, there's areas that have more important contrast than other areas. And then you've got the mouth, which is a flat value, flat value. Um, there's zero volume to it. We'll talk about that. So before I do, what I want to cover first is the most important thing about any 14-day challenge, which is the point at which it's not about the face. Because if it's all about the face for you, what happens is... Um, you start relying on what it is that helped you draw your last face. We have to stop that in its tracks. We, first, you have to identify that you are doing soothing mechanisms to help you deal with the anxiety of an empty canvas. So sometimes habits are soothing habits, right? That, that. Um, so that's one. Two, uh, we have to stop seeing the face as a symbol altogether. We have to just start treating the face as a building. And what building, what shape am I talking about when I say that? So I actually have a copy of my full master class right here. And my master class is three, two and a half hours of just nonstop, nonstop art talk about portraits. Everything that goes into the 14 day challenge, what makes a portrait realistic. I take you from here all the way to here. And the very first shape that I show you in this two and a half hours, nonstop two and a half hours is a sphere. Um, the sphere is important for a reason. There, I, I do it in a way where I'm not asking you, oh, you know, go, go here, go spend some five minutes doing 
spheres and then come back and do this. We do a sphere right in the middle of the tutorial. It's embedded right in there. And what we do first is we render the sphere. We make the sphere read as if it is part of a light environment. Um, so that's exactly what you're missing here. That's the first layer of the critique today is that first you had a background value that made no sense with any of the values you used on the face. It was just like this muddy value that didn't explain where all the highlights were coming from on the portrait, right? Again, line dependence. We're seeing extra shadows around the nose. We're seeing excessive uh, kind of shadow around the eyes and dependence on the eyebrows. So we get rid of that and we see a little bit more of a background value that represents some of what's happening contrast-wise on the face. Then I'm going to try to get these eyebrows to be a bit more symmetrical. So I gave the eyes some size. And now what I'm going to do is apply that structural contrast that's required. Again, in the masterclass, I list out every possible point of contrast. I list out all the six dark spots and the sub dark spots in that list. So the, the substructures of dark spots in there. And the list just keeps getting longer and longer. Um, where to taper, where to sharpen, all of that. Every single resource you may need list-wise um, is included. It's good for, and it's full of diagrams everywhere. So it's good for visual learners, which we all are, but some artists are a combination of visual learning and technical learning. They need lists. They need lists that explain the, the, the me mechanisms and the function and the, the critical contrast type of stuff. That also is in my master class. So it's really, it's really student friendly and it's, it's applicable to all learning styles. I'm blending now all my blocks and you want to use a smaller brush when blending out uh, areas that are very structured, made out of things that aren't squishy and areas that are squishy, you want to use a larger brush and my smudge brush, every brush I use is included in the master class as well. And if the masterclass is too expensive for you right now, which I completely understand, um, in October, everything is on sale for two weeks, starting October 1st to the 14th, everything is on sale. So if you want to, you can wait and it'll be much cheaper uh, than buying it now. The, the, the catch is please tell your friends that it will be on sale so they can get it too. And I'm just going to just darken the entire eye socket. I call these like insurance brush strokes. They really make the eyeball feel like it's inside the skull and the skull is depressed in that area. But then we see that the, the white of the eyes is actually very flat and too dark for whites of the eyes. I mean, they're called whites of the eyes. They're not literally white, but they're white in comparison to their surroundings. So radially, I'm going to raise the white in the eye as if it's a sphere. It's just another ball that I am elevating. Do you see that? So please pay attention to this, see that? I did that radially, I did that with piles of brush strokes, meaning that if I showed you a cross section of each brush stroke, this is brush stroke number one, brush stroke number two, brush stroke number three, and number four, until it got really bright at the top. Because I was doing opacity, this actually tapers and then eventually gets really dark. And this is the, the concept of it on top of an eyeball. You see that? That's radial shading. And again, all of that is explained in depth in the class. So, um, so before, after. And now you have a nice core shadow for the eyeball. Um, so before, after. So now we have a light environment that corresponds with the values used on the face. We have more clear contrast around the eyes. The eyebrows are not higher contrast or higher priority than the eyes. The eyebrows and the upper lip had the same contrast, which was absolutely useless. And the, um, and the waist of contrast and uh, the lower, the, the shadow of the neckline was just extremely dark for no reason at all. You use way more contrast than you need in your drawings. Um, if this wasn't the original face you intended, honestly, it's hard to extract a particular character from this. I'm only characterizing by accident. I'm not characterizing intentionally. I saw a male, so I applied some male features. Um, but you could do, uh, you could go back to where it was before, where you had the slightly wider lip and the larger nose. This is my default go-to for, for classes, so if you feel like the face changed too much, um, it's not about characterizing. It's okay if your 14-day challenge face 
doesn't look the same each day either. Um, just do it, just, just draw whatever comes out as long as your eyes and your mind were geared toward um, the fundamentals, knowing that things need to make sense with the light source. Where's my light source? Is everything um, a fundamental shape? Does everything read properly? Are all my shadows pointing in the right direction? That's what's important. Characterization is not important. Yeah, it does look like Je Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if you guys learned something, something, if you guys learned something today, um, please uh, consider joining me as a one dollar patron on Patreon. It's just to support the channel and keep it running, keep all these challenges going. And if you are interested in my masterclass, which goes in depth into all of this stuff, you can find um, you can find it on my store. But wait wait for the sale uh october 1st to the 14th it'll be almost half off um and it'll be even more off uh, around december for christmas for one week or two um but wait a little while and you can get it in two weeks time almost um and uh and it'll be much cheaper but it, it goes in depth it comes with templates it comes with all the brushes that it, that i use it comes with a psd of the tutorial it comes with how to change this into color. So it comes with a, a color tutorial as well. Um, let me show you that really quickly. Um, and the color tutorial is really fun because it, it, it just gives you a really um, uh, student, like friendly, uh, beginner friendly approach to colors. You don't actually have to start the whole, I show you how to transfer from grayscale to color. I give you an actual palette to use to, to, to eye drop yourself and use it if you wanted to start from scratch and color. And I basically go through every, most of uh, the, the, the extreme of every shade uh, and, um, and how to how to paint different characters and different complexions, where the blush points are across the, these different complexions and ethnicities, all that. Um, so if you are interested in that, just wait for a little while and you'll be able to get it much cheaper. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time next week. Next next week, yeah, next week Thursday. Um, next next Thursday is the Harvest Goddess Design Challenge due date. And you guys have around uh, one week or two, uh, or under two weeks left of sketch timber. After that, we will have a video showcasing everyone's submission. So you'll all be on the video for anyone who joined it. And uh, a sketch timber is right after that. Uh, for my patrons, they are doing a whole month of figure drawing, and that will be finished around the 4th of October. And then right after that, we're going into environment studies, eerie um, Halloween-y environment thumbnails, that, uh, three thumbnails that connect the story. So a narrative will be given to all my patrons if you want to join as an apprentice. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys uh, next class on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Bye.